from the South Point studio. <laughs> the perfect blend of sports. But I think the Niners are going to wear them down. Detroit Pistons lost their 36 games. Comedy. See the over-under on that relationship lasting. I'm going to put mayo in the coffee. Yeah. I am beautiful. And a whole lot of Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. 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 Yeah. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Join Ryan McCormick. That's at least... Two picks outside of our own in the first round next year. A real. And host, Frank Nicotero. <laughs> <laughs> so I look at the clock. I go, ah! Ah! Oh! Watch Punchlines live at noon every weekday. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service, bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered. Who is there for heroes or the families left behind when a service member or first responder dies or is catastrophically injured in the line of duty? Who helps our country's homeless veterans? And who helps our nation to never forget 9-11? Let me tell you who. The Tunnel to Towers Foundation. The Foundation's Gold Star, Fallen First Responder, Smart Home, and Homeless Veteran programs comprise their In the Line of Duty programs. They're all dedicated to honoring our nation's heroes and their families. The Foundation's Never Forget programs engage people in 9-11 remembrance across America. Over 80 runs, walks, and climbs a year, dozens of golf outings, and the Tunnel to Towers 9-11 Institute is educating kids in kindergarten through 12th grade to help our nation keep its vow to never forget. More than 95 cents of every dollar you donate to Tunnel to Towers goes to its programs. Never forget the sacrifices of our country's greatest heroes. Donate $11 a month to Tunnel to Towers at T2T.org. That's T the number two, T.org. The following is a Race Day Las Vegas presentation in association with Sirocco Productions Limited on the Race Day Las Vegas Radio Network. Live from the gaming capital of the world, time for Race Day Las Vegas, covering the sport of kings with a Las Vegas perspective. Now to the race desk with your host, Ralph Sirocco. From the backstretch to the turf club, at the race books and on the internet, to all horse players around the world, a good morning. All righty. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Race Day Las Vegas radio program for this almost Friday, Thursday. We come to you live and direct from the gaming capital of the world right here at the South Point Studios at the South Point Hotel Casino Complex on Las Vegas Boulevard. We welcome you to the show. And of course, uh, we welcome all of you that get to see us now on the South Point Network streaming at YouTube. Just go to YouTube and hit South Point Studios. You get to the site, and then you just click on us, and you can see and listen to us live on the uh, South Point Studio Network on YouTube. So we welcome you to the show this way as far as our other platforms. Of course, as you know, our anchor radio station here in town, you can hear us while you're running around town on your car radio or in home at uh, your radio, and that is, of course, Sports Talk 1400 AM, 107.1 FM, and, of course, uh, all of our other streaming uh, platforms that we have, like our websites, racedaylasvegas.com, .vegas, .world, .global, iPhone, Android with the KSHP or YouTube app. You can hear us and or see us with those apps on your devices, your iPhones or your Androids, and of course, anywhere you get your podcasting as well. So welcome to the uh, Thursday edition of the Race Day Las Vegas radio program. Well, uh, of course, uh, we're looking ahead to this weekend. One last race, one last gasp uh, leaderboard points uh, for the Kentucky Derby, and that'll be the Lexington Stakes. That'll happen on Saturday. 
really only one horse in that race has an opportunity, if it wins, to get the 20 points and have enough total points to bump up and bump somebody out of the field of 20 uh, leaderboard points and, uh, and that in the, um, in the uh, uh, Lexington on Saturday. And, of course, that horse is uh, Hades, so we'll wait and see about that. But we have uh, some interesting racing coming up, uh, not only tomorrow, but for the weekend. Uh, at Keeneland on uh, tomorrow, the uh, Maker's Mark Stakes will feature the return to the United States of Master of the Seas, and Bob Baffert is sending out a uh, multi-stakes winner from Southern California, De Jour. Uh, that race, uh, the Maker's Mark, and the other feature of the day, the Limestone, which is at five and a half prolongs, that is wide open and has an overflow field that includes two also eligibles. They may need to use those because uh, the weather is starting to slam from the Midwest all the way to the East Coast. It's a mess. And that mess, of course, goes right over Kentucky, where Keeneland is at. And those two races tomorrow are scheduled for the turf course. So we'll wait and see what happens there in those races. As far as the weekend, uh, the main event on the weekend comes at Oak Lawn Park, and that will be the Apple Blossom Stakes. Uh, That is a grade one for the older fillies and mares. Bob Baffert is saying, sending out Adair Manor to compete in the Apple Blossom, and I guess Wet Paint will be uh, the big foe in that race, as uh, we'll take a look at that field a little bit later on. But uh, with Baffert, since 1993, Bob Baffert has sent 91 horses to Oak Lawn Park for individual races. And out of those 91 times, 39 of those horses won those races. That's a 43% win ratio. And, of course, he won the Apple Blossom with one of those 39 wins in 2011 with Plum Pretty. So we'll wait and see about the Apple Blossom, a grade one on Saturday. The Count Fleet will also be on Saturday. That's a grade three at Oak Lawn. That'll feature Skelly, who, uh, of course, as you know, was second in that big sprint race in Saudi Arabia recently. He's back in, uh, at Oak Lawn Park. A uh, track that he loves. He has six wins out of eight starts at Oak Lawn, and he won the Count Fleet last year. So he'll be looking to repeat in the Count Fleet, and that is also on Saturday at Oak Lawn Park. And uh, uh, as far as Keeneland is concerned, in addition to the Lexington with the uh, small 20 points and the leaderboard there for the Kentucky Derby, you also have the Jenny Wiley that had a field of 10 entered. And the Giants Causeway is an oversubscribed race as well. The Giants Causeway has uh, 12 in the body of the field and one AE. So uh, we're going to see a lot of uh, interesting action going on over the weekend. And as we wait for the Kentucky Derby, as we count down to the Kentucky Derby, uh, we'll be uh, watching those races around the country as well. So uh, without uh, any further ado, I want to remind you that uh, Jonathan Hardoon is on our show today. Rich Ang will be with us for selection. John Lendo, and of course, Jerry Jackowitz. And John Lendo has the Lendo Report this week on Keeneland Racecourse because, as you know, Santa Anita wrapped up their winter spring meeting on Sunday. They won't be back in business until next Friday at Santa Anita for the Hollywood meeting there. And uh, as far as uh, Jerry Jackowitz, he'll be along, of course, with our aqueduct picks for today. So, taking a look at the weather around the country, Uh, Well, first of all, here in Las Vegas, 57 degrees outside and the sun is shining. We're finally getting the type of weather we get at this time of the year here in Las Vegas. We're going to get up to 86 degrees today, and it'll be in the 80s and uh, the low 80s and uh, mid to low 80s for the rest of the weekend here in Las Vegas. A little bit of wind coming our way maybe on Saturday Saturday or Sunday, but otherwise uh, the weather is going to be really nice. And, of course, it's always fast, firm, and perfect in the race books here in Las Vegas. And today, of course, is the first day of the Masters uh, Golf Tournament. Uh, Many uh, believe the Masters is the most prestigious golf uh, tournament on the golf tour. It starts today, but uh, Mother Nature may be playing a part in in that in uh, Augusta, Georgia, because as I say, there is nothing but a mess of clouds, rain, etc. going through from the uh, Great Lakes area right down to almost the Gulf area, from the Midwest all the way to the East Coast. So there's going to be a lot of off tracks and maybe a delay in the first round of the Masters today as well. All right. Well, you're all set and ready to go, and so are we. So we're going to take our first break and remind you that uh, you can go to YouTube. Hit uh, When you get to YouTube, put in the uh, search there, South Point Studio. 
when you get to that, you'll be able to see us by just clicking on the show. We hope you join us. And if you do, don't forget to subscribe. It is free with uh, the subscribing there so you won't miss our shows as well. We'll be right back. Don't go away. This is your almost Friday, Thursday show. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's Racebook has you covered. Alrighty, back on the race day show for this almost Friday Thursday, and I uh, want to remind everybody again that uh, we're uh, heading towards the Kentucky Derby, and we have a, a lot of great uh, great things happening here for Derby Week as we celebrate the 150th running of the Run for the Roses. We'll have a special Kentucky Oaks and Kentucky Derby preview show right here on the South Point Studios Network on YouTube, but only here. We will not be simulcasting over the radio or any of the other platforms that we have. you got to go to YouTube and uh, punch in South Point Studios and get to us. It'll be Thursday night, the Thursday before the Kentucky Derby. And that, of course, will be on the second day of May, May 2nd. It'll be 3 o'clock in the afternoon Pacific time, 3 o'clock Pacific time. We're going to have Jonathan Hardoon here from uh, the East Coast and, of course, John Lendo from the West Coast. They'll also be doing the Kentucky Derby seminar with us on uh, the following night, on Friday night, and a few other guest handicappers with us as well on this special show. And what we'll do is we'll go over, since it's the Thursday before the Kentucky Derby, and more importantly, the Thursday before the Kentucky Oaks Day card, we'll be going over the Kentucky Oaks and uh, uh, and other races that the uh, handicappers of interest on that Friday. So when you watch the show on Thursday, you'll be all set and ready to go for the Friday Kentucky Oaks card as far as our handicappers are concerned. And then, of course, we'll preview the Kentucky Derby seminar coming up on the next night, Friday night. Now, on the Friday, of course, we'll have our usual shows in the morning like we always do. And then, of course, uh, Friday after the Kentucky Oaks card and racing is concluded uh, in Southern California, we'll be having our uh, Kentucky Derby seminar. That Kentucky Derby seminar will be Friday night, 6 p.m., uh, here at the South Point in the Grand View Lounge, which is adjacent to the, uh, the, the uh, race book. We'll go over the Kentucky Derby, of course, Jonathan and John again. And then, of course, on Saturday, as you can see, the big Kentucky Derby viewing party, uh, that'll be on uh, Saturday. And that Kentucky Derby viewing party will be, of course, in the big ballroom upstairs. So we got a plenty of, uh, going on, and we invite you to join us. We'll be here. <laughs> Doing this, uh, all, all those shows will be here at the uh, South Point celebrating America's most famous horse race, the Run for the Roses. Uh, we're, what, what I'm going to do right now is I think uh, I'm going to go over the Kentucky Derby uh, horses and the jockey assignments as we think we have them now, as we know we have most of them uh, set and ready to go. But before we do that, let's go to our racing menu for today. We'll go over those uh, jockeys with, uh, with uh, Mr. Jonathan Hardoon. Taking a look quickly at what happened yesterday at Keeneland. Mm, the highest priced winner of the day at Keeneland yesterday came in the sixth race, paid $12.96. Uh, Jonathan Hardoon's horse, uh, I believe, ran third yesterday at, uh, well, at uh, Aqueduct. But uh, yesterday, by the way, I did want to mention the first time starter for Wesley Ward in the second race, a four and a half furlong race now for two year olds. That horse raised the bar. It was very impressive. It was a muddy day all day yesterday at Keeneland. Remind, keep you on that. And uh, as I uh, said, uh, uh, Gerard, Gabriel Maldonado, not uh, our usual Maldonado in Southern California, but Gabriel Maldonado, won the first three races in a row yesterday at Tampa Bay. So I want to keep an eye on uh, that uh, kid Maldonado at Tampa Bay. And uh, 
That's about uh, all we have to do for the races on yesterday, okay? Now we can get to the menu of tracks today. Here's your racing menu today, reminding you that the first post times we broadcast on the show each and every day, of course, is that of the Pacific Time Zone. So if you're listening here in Las Vegas, these will be the first post times rolling out in our race book. If you're listening anywhere else on any of the other platforms, adjust from the Pacific Time to your particular time zone so you don't miss anything in the racing as well as I miss mom and dad, of course. And uh, first post times again are Pacific. All right, we begin with Mahoning Valley Racecourse. Mahoning Valley Racecourse has a nice pick six jackpot carryover today. $101,058 is their pick six jackpot carryover today at Mahoning Valley. Eight races in a first post time of 955. And then we're going to Keeneland. Now, all I can tell you is Keeneland was a muddy mess yesterday, and the weather doesn't look any more uh, attractive today. So it's going to still be off at Keeneland, no doubt about that. Now, uh, we'll wait and see if the turf races, uh, and there's uh, really only two turf races scheduled for today at Keeneland. They're probably coming off the turf. 85% chance rain there, so you know uh, it's going to be muddy again. First post time is 10 a.m. at Keeneland. Keeneland has a first post time of 10 a.m. today for their nine race card. Gulfstream Park is next. Their first post time for eight races set at 10:10, and at Gulfstream Park's Pick Six Rainbow Jackpot carryover, sixty-three thousand three hundred and twenty-two dollars. Sixty-three thousand three twenty-two at Gulfstream. First post time for their eight races, 10 a.m. Pacific time. Then we go to the Big A in New York, Aqueduct. Well, right now, the track is labeled fast at Aqueduct. It's cloudy, 52 degrees, and all I can tell you is that front is making its way to the East Coast. That's for sure. First post time at Aqueduct today is set at 10.20. 10.20 first post at Aqueduct. Then we get to Turf Paradise in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, Turf Paradise uh, has a first post time of 12.55. They have 10 races. The first two races will be quarter horse trials at 350 yards. And then they have uh, eight thoroughbred races, but among those thoroughbred races are three trials at four and a half furlongs for two-year-olds today. So uh, Turf Paradise is mixing it up a bit. First post time at Turf Paradise today for their 10 races set at uh, 12.55. And uh, they have a pick six jackpot carryover, the highest in the nation today, $305,925 in the pick six jackpot at Turf Paradise. First post time, 12.55. Next will come Evangeline Downs. They have eight races. Their first post time is 3.30. And uh, Charlestown, they wrap up the uh, racing menu for today. Charlestown Races has a pick six jackpot carryover, $14,441. First post time at Charlestown is set at uh, 4 p.m. 4 p.m. at Charlestown. All right, that's your racing menu for this almost Friday, Thursday. And uh, we have, uh, you know, we have the uh, most of the horses that are going to go in the uh, Kentucky Derby, maybe one or two defections. Certainly, uh, if Hades wins at the Lexington, he might be bumped up depending on any defections. But in any case, most of the field is set as far as uh, their, the completion of their races for the Kentucky Derby and actually running their next race in the run for the Roses. So we're gonna, what I'm going to do uh, today is just go over some of the jockey assignments. Most of them will be the same. But we do have a few changes. I'm going to bring in Jonathan Hardoon. Jonathan, good morning. Good morning, Ralph. How are you? I'm doing fine, my man. Well, you know, um, the def- no Do- Bob Baffert horses in the Kentucky Derby, at least up until maybe yeah. Monday. We'll wait and see about that. <laughs> but in any case, uh, you know, your your top trainers in the country, especially Todd Pletcher, who always has a, an abundance of uh, Triple Crown nominated horses, uh, you know, uh, I got to tell you that uh, Todd Pletcher winds up with only uh, now just one horse in the field of 20 that's going to make it to the Kentucky Derby if all the parts stay in the right place. But that one horse is the one horse that everybody, yeah, thinks could possibly win it. And that is, of course, fierceness. Of course, John Velasquez rode the horse when he won the Florida Derby. Velasquez is going to stay on that horse, obviously, uh, for the Kentucky Derby. And Chad Brown, who normally doesn't have three-year-olds developing this early in the season, he's usually uh, big on handicap horses and, of course, turf horses. He has two in uh, going to the Kentucky Derby, and he has one of the big uh, competitors, and a lot of people think might be the favorite for the Kentucky Derby, Sierra Leone, 
who just won the uh, Bluegrass with Tyler Gaffleone aboard. And the other one is Domestic Product. Now, that horse won the Tampa Bay Derby, but Gaffleone also rode that horse. And obviously, Gaffleone is going to stay with uh, Ty- Sierra Leone. So Chad Brown has reached out to one of his other uh, jockeys that usually rides a lot for him. And I read Ortiz Jr. is going to ride that horse. Yeah, well, that makes sense. I mean, Gaffleone's obviously going to pick Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone will be favorite or co-favorite or certainly the second choice, no worse than that. So he's not going to give that mount up. And uh, listen, Gaffleone's as good as there is, Ralph. He tries every time. He's a 100% strong rider. He's always in the right spot. And uh, I could bet him all day long. I have no problems playing Tyler Gaffleone. I do not either. And I can tell you for sure he's one of, has had a lot of his success right there at Churchill Downs. So he knows that oval and what to do. Uh, the only other trainer in the race with more than one horse in the race is your man, Brad Cox. Brad Cox has Catching Freedom, who won the Louisiana Derby. He'll stick with uh, Flavian Pratt. will stick with that horse. He was aboard on the Louisiana Derby. And, of course, uh, Just a Touch, a horse that you liked uh, last in the uh, in the Bluegrass. That horse ran a, a nice second in the Bluegrass. Florent Garreau uh, will stay with Just a Touch in that race as well. So Brad Cox has got two. Uh, very good horses that uh, on any given day could upset the, the this field without a doubt. Yeah, listen, you know, when you when you make the dirt, all you want to do is be in it, as Rich Strike will tell you. You know, you get an opportunity, anything could happen. But the Cox horses, they're not as good as horses that he sent there in the past, but uh, he will not be embarrassed. And that's a quote. <laughs> okay, he will not be embarrassed, and that is a quote. <laughs> Uh, as far as uh, the other assignments, of course, Antonio Fresu will stay with the Santa Anita Derby winner, Stronghold. Uh, you've got uh, the Wood Memorial winner, uh, Resilience, who had John Velasquez on last time. Of course, uh, Velasquez is uh, definitely going to stay with uh, fierceness, that's for sure. But it's a Bill Mott trainee, and Bill Mott, uh, his usual number, number one guy is uh, Junior Alvarado. So uh, we're thinking that maybe Alvarado lands on Resilience for the Kentucky Derby. I would say that's probably a good bet. Uh, Listen, this horse was highly regarded early as a two-year-old, never panned out. But as a three-year-old, he came out well. They put blinkers on last time. It certainly made the difference. The horse ran huge. And, uh, you know, again, lightly raced horses always have room for improvement. So we will find out. And the UAE Derby winner that also has 100 points, uh, Forever Young, will stay with his uh, uh, Japanese rider there. Uh, in the uh, the Jeff Ruby uh, winner, uh, Endlessly, uh, stays uh, Umberto Rispoli. will stay on Mike, uh, Michael McCarthy's horse there. Dornock, uh, that was Luis Saez's uh, big derby mount. I know he's really disappointing in the bluegrass, finishing fourth in that, but uh, Saez is going to stick with Danny Gargan's horse there. And, uh, of course, uh, Joel Rosario, who uh, was uh, fourth in the Louisiana Derby aboard track Phantom. He still thinks that that horse has uh, positive uh, action going for him. So Rosario is going to stay on that Steve Asmussen trainee. Uh, West Saratoga will keep Jesus Castanon after running second in the Jeff Ruby. Uh, Keith Asmussen, uh, which was second in the Arkansas Derby with Justice Steele, will stay on the D. Wayne Lucas trainee. That is a very interesting horse in combination there. And, uh, you know, Justice Steele, I think, uh, showed some promise, although finishing second in the Arkansas Derby. I don't know if he wants the distance, but you're right. Listen, it's a great story. Uh, he's giving Keith S. Mewson a shot to run in the Derby. I mean, it's uh, it's probably been a dream of the kid since he was born, yeah. and uh, he's going to get a chance to live it out. For the coach, too. That's, uh, that's yeah. going to be a story, that's for sure. Uh, the Honor Marie, a horse that you liked earlier for the Louisiana Derby and finished second in that race. It will keep Ben Curtis for Whit Beckman, a trainer there. And then, of course, as we said, domestic product, the, uh, Chad Brown goes to Irad Ortiz Jr. from Gaff Leone, that the winner of the Tampa Bay Derby. The second place finisher in the Florida Derby, Catalytic, uh, Catalytic, Catalytic will uh, stay with Julian Le Peru for Safi Joseph Jr., and, of course, Christopher Clement, uh, now looking for a rider for deterministic in the Wood Memorial, ran eighth in that. And maybe, who knows if that horse is even going to go. Yeah, rumor has it that he may be passing up on the Derby. They, they think the distance is a question. They were very disappointed in his run last time out, first time around two turns. So they were uh, trying to figure things out, and uh, they better do it in a hurry because uh, we're about three weeks out. 
Danny Gargan, who, like uh, Brad Cox, has a, and like uh, Chad Brown, has two horses uh, aiming for that race. That horse, a society man who finished second in the Wood Memorial, will keep the services of Luis Rivera Jr. And then we got Mystic Dan, Kenny McPeak's horse, who finished third in the Arkansas Derby. Brian Hernandez will stay there. No more time for Jose D'Angelo. Uh, second in the Tampa Bay Derby, Javier Castellano. Of course, remember his uh, ride on Mage in the Kentucky Derby. will stick there. And then T.O. Password, uh, the horse uh, from uh, Japan, uh, will get uh, Kazuchi Kimura riding in that one there. Winner of the Fukuru Stakes uh, recently overseas. But no commitments yet. For jockeys, Jose Ortiz, Frankie DeTore, of course, was riding Baffert's horses in Southern California. Manny Franco doesn't have him out. And Juan Hernandez also, who rode uh, Baffert's horses in California, uh, sitting on the sidelines. So we'll wait and see if any one of those jockeys pick up uh, maybe uh, one or two of the amounts. Well, maybe maybe uh, Hernandez or DeTore is waiting to see if uh, Baffert's horse gets allowed in, because if he does, I'm sure they'll jump on that opportunity if they get a chance to you know, no one's committed to those horses. So, and they're not committed to any other horses. What's interesting is you have Doorknock, you have Track Phantom, and you have Fierceness. And all three of these horses have one way to go, and that's full steam ahead. So, uh, there's going to be a lot of jockey, uh, you know, intention here, and we're going to see who's going to figure out who's going to go and who's going to sit. Is and because all three of these horses, no question about it, their best races are when they're on the lead. And uh, if you have three guys all going for the lead, well, that will only help horses like Sierra Leone. You know, and I remember um, several Kentucky Derbies ago where there were a lot of horses that uh, were speed-type horses like uh, this year. And then all of a sudden, one guy decides to go and the other guy say, well, you know, I'll just sit back and wait and wait. And you go wire to wire. So you can never tell. It's very hard to go wire to wire in the Kentucky Derby. No doubt about that. But uh, out of the horses that uh, we know that are horses that have the penchant for the lead, uh, Fierceness is the one that, you know, we all... He's have, the most talented yeah, out of yeah. the three of them that need the lead. There's no question about it. If the real Fierceness shows up, but again, he's never run two races together. You know, he's never put in two big efforts. He's always run a good race followed by a subpar race. Well, now he's coming off of a good race. So let's see if uh, if things continue or if he finally makes that step forward. If he makes that step forward, he's going to be very tough to beat. He's got a world of talent. He's got to put races together, something he hasn't done yet. You know, Jonathan, uh, they were saying the fierceness was really working out of out of this world leading up to the Florida Derby, and we saw what happened in the Florida Derby, that unbelievable jaw-dropping win there. Uh, I, got a, I got a tendency to think oh, I'm going to wait until that horse gets the Churchill Downs and how he starts working over that particular racetrack, and if, he, uh, if the screws are still tight on that horse and that horse is, uh, you know, putting in some bullet yeah. workouts, et cetera, uh, I got to think that they're going to – uh, you know, use the same tactics, employ the same tactics there, and see if they can get away with just going on the lead with a horse who will have a great bottom to him at that time. And we all know about Dornock, the experiment didn't work in his last race, so he's got to be on or close to the lead to uh, perceivably have his best performance. And same thing goes for Track Phantom. His best races were when he was on the lead. But you're right. But remember one thing Fierceness's last race in Florida, he had to run that race. People were on the fence, whether he's a real horse or a counterfeit horse. And he w- he was definitely squeezed for that race. There's no question about it. I'm convinced that they wanted a top performance and they got it. And at least he has enough time. You know, I think he has like six or seven weeks going into the Derby. So that's enough time where he could put efforts together. It's going to be interesting, Ralph. Again, post position is going to be very key here. You want to know who's going to be inside who, who's going to be outside who, who draws the rail. So, you know, all this talk is okay, but let's see what happens after post position draw. Well, there's no doubt about it. The final elements of handicapping that uh, I believe uh, will have some uh, value to them will be how the horses adapt to the Churchill Downs racetrack, how they'll adapt to the big crowds. These are going to be the biggest crowds these horses have ever seen. And, of course, uh, how they travel over the racetrack, how they're training on the track, and, of course, uh, in the end, the uh, post position draw, no doubt about it. And that's why uh, we're going to keep on track day by day as these things keep developing 
up until the uh, Derby Day, that's for sure. But uh, and remember, uh, remember the way Sierra Leone misbehaved prior to his last race yeah. with a crowd of thirty thousand people. Now, but he was also breaking from an extreme outside post, which was very close, I guess, to the grandstand. So he really got to hear those people. So you know, if he draws an outside box with one hundred fifty thousand people there. Who knows how he's going to behave? So all these are little things that really don't have much to do with the race, but they have a lot to do with the race. You know, it's a race inside a race, and who knows what's inside people's minds. Well, when you're, getting, when you're getting to the point of the Kentucky Derby, and these uh, most of these trainers will have these horses wound up for what they believe to be their best performance or try to get it because the, this day on the calendar was marked in the shed row of all those uh, trainers way in advance that do we uh, those little things can make a hundred percent difference. Absolutely. And you know, everyone wants their horse to obviously give their best performance on Derby day. No one's looking to throw a dud that day. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's millions and millions of dollars involved besides everything else that goes along with winning the Derby. So obviously that race, everyone is pointing for everyone has it circled on their calendar and everybody expects to get there and have their horse with the best opportunity to win. You know, Jonathan, there's one universal thing we can all say about the Kentucky Derby year in and year out universally. There is one thing you can say, but that always is something you can say only after the race. And that is, there's going to be some trouble in the race for some guys. You know that the trips aren't going to be perfect. For sure. I mean, 20 horses, there's no way. Going into that first turn, uh, five or six of them are going to have built-in excuses for sure. (laughs) Yeah, that's for sure. But it'll be a lot of fun as it is. It's America's most famous horse race. Everybody who was a basketball fan and football fan and sports fan overall becomes a racing fan for the great sport of uh, the Kings on uh, that uh, first Saturday in May, that's for sure. I want to try to help them out, too. That's, That's no doubt about it. Looking ahead to this weekend... Of course, we got the Lexington at Keeneland, but we also got the Jenny Wiley and the Giants Causeway. I know you're uh, doing a sheet for the uh, Keeneland, and of course, we'll be talking about those races on Saturday. Uh, but t- tomorrow, they have uh, Keeneland has two really nice races, the Maker- Maker's Mark and the Limestone. Both of them are scheduled on the turf. Now, we got that European horse, Master of the Stars, coming back, and he'll be, uh, he's been entered in the Maker's Mark, along with Baffert sending out du jour who was a big winner last on the grass stakes races at uh, Santa Anita. But these races may not, th- these races might fall apart tomorrow because, uh, you know, the weather does not look encouraging either for today, yesterday, today, or tomorrow in that part of the country. Well, I would say today's turf races are certainly in jeopardy. They want to protect that grass course as, as much as possible. And if the rain continues and, and and they decide to stay on the grass, which in all likelihood they will do everything possible, it certainly helps the European horse because they're used to running on, on you know, turf courses that have a lot of give to it. So uh, it will be interesting. Let's hope the weather clears up. I know today's probably going to be another washout there. The interesting race so far that I've seen is the Lexington on Saturday. Just a little tease here, Ralph. I love I love a ten to one shot, which we will be giving out Saturday morning. Oh, so be sure to you, listen back. You are a tease, and that's a great tease too for the Lexington. We'll 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 hold you to the fire on that one. That's for sure. Uh, the big the biggest race of the weekend, however, will be at Oakland Park, the Apple Blossom, which is a Grade One for the Phillies, the older Phillies and mares. And uh, Bob Baffert's uh, sending out Adair Manor. I talked about his uh, batting average uh, when he sends horses to Oaklawn on the first segment of the show. But, uh, you know, Adair Manor's been doing her work in Southern California. She's going to face uh, wet paint, among other older fillies and mares. I know you'll do a sheet for Oaklawn as well, but uh, taking a first blush glance at that, uh, how do you think Adair Manor will transfer uh, her past performances in Southern California to Oaklawn Park? Well, you never question Baffert, especially with the stat you just gave before on how well he does and how much success he has shipping to Oakland. The interesting thing about that horse is I think she does her best running when she's on the lead. If she makes the lead, well, things will be a lot easier for her there. But uh, I actually didn't dig into the race yet, but I have two days to do it, so it will be done. All right, and I guess uh, we'll go to the uh, police blotter uh, for this last uh... A little uh, segment here, and that is uh, Mr. Uh, Phil Schoenthal, who is a uh, top trainer on the Maryland circuit. 
got nailed from HISA, and uh, he's uh, he's gonna uh, he's going through uh, you know a big suspension uh, that they gave him for uh, some drug positives. It's another all-time trainer that really has had a pretty clean record throughout his career, and uh, Heisa doing what Heisa does not so well, goes after a lot of people and really ruining their life. You know, there was a trainer that they suspended from Southern California, Lorenzo uh, Ruiz. Ruiz, yeah. Yeah, and then they they suspended him for a, a drug violation, I guess. But then he's also an outrider at Low Sal at night just to make some money. Uh -huh. And they added a year suspension because he's still being an outrider. I mean, what does an outrider have to do with being a trainer? So I you're guess you telling just me, yeah, I, I believe he got a two-year suspension initially, didn't he? I think it was a little longer than that, but I know they tacked on And they on added year, on another year? Another year and $5,000 more because he was just doing his job. He was an outrider at night at Low Cell. And That's carrying it a little too far, in my opinion. Now, uh, so we're saying that he can't be an outrider either then. They just want to totally put him out of business and rule him off. It's just crazy. It's out of control. The, I, think the, I think the common denominator problem is starting to arise here with these, uh, with these uh, suspensions because of the uh, small drug overdoses of banned drugs uh, has a lot to do with the the contamination situation that uh, prevails in in uh, stable areas. Remember, this is not sitting in somebody's home that's uh, controlled. It's in a stable area where they are, are subject to all sorts of uh, outside contamination, as far as dust from uh, you know who knows what was in the dust uh, from bet. from the feed and all that stuff. It's just it's 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 a how about when people ship in? How about when people ship in to a to a stable? You know, they're not stable there all year round. They ship into Oakland or San Anita or wherever, and they go to a receiving barn where who knows who was there before them. And I mean, now they're responsible for cleaning out everything and you know disinfecting the. It just can't work. You cannot sanitize that much when you're dealing with animals in an outdoor environment. It's really that simple. Exactly. So I think they're going to have to kind of fine tune that before they start ruining people's careers. Well, they're doing that already, but yeah, they should shake a leg and do it kind of quickly yeah. because what they're doing now is just unfair to people. It's, they're ruining people's lives. People have been in the game for 40, 50 years and, they, and they've and they never had a problem. Now all of a sudden they're having problems. Something's wrong. Well, I can tell you this right now. Uh, if uh, they, they come to the conclusion that a lot of this is contamination and they uh, kind of retrofit uh, the, the new parameters for uh, suspending somebody or something like that, then they ought to go back and, and uh, really get all of those people that uh, were the victims uh, of their uh, early days and, and do something about that. And re, re, um, they're going to have to reinstate these people and make up for what they you're cost They're going to have to them. reinstate their reputation is what they're going to have to do. That's for sure. How do you reinstate someone's reputation? By doing a big apology saying, you know what? <laughs> we screwed up. <laughs> there you go. And you use the you use the word that we can use on the air for for that uh, in any case. All right, time to get started. Let's get some horses. All right, Ralph, we're going to avoid Keelan today because of the weather. We're not sure what the situation is. So the first of our two radio plays is going to come in Aqueduct's third race, six and a half furlongs on the main track, full field of eight go. And I like the number four horse in here, excellent men. Four-year-old gelding from the David Jacobson barn, Isaac Castillo aboard to ride. This is an improving horse. He's getting better with each start. He won last time out at Laurel, ships to New York today, five to one on the morning line. Number four, excellent men, makes it two in a row for this horse. All righty, in the third race, number four, excellent men, five to one on the morning line, the four in the third at Aqueduct, and finally... Let's go to Gulfstream and look at race number five, six furlongs on the main track. You have a late scratch in there of the number five horse, 5150. But I like the number 12 horse in here, Intransigent. Uh, this is a three-year-old called two career starts. First time out, uh, two starts back, he ran on the main track, breaking from the rail, going six and a half furlongs, had a tough trip that day, then tried synthetic last time out, didn't run well, let's draw a line through it. Now draws an outside box, rider switch today to Luca Panici, 12 to one on the morning line, number 12, Intransigent. Upsets and wins today's fifth race. 
at a Gulfstream Park. All right. The anchor race in the pick five and the pick four there. In the fifth race, number 12, Intertragident. Uh, that's a. Intransigent. Intransigent, <laughs> right. Uh, that. Uh, I put the mark right over the name, so it was kind of. Uh, anyhow. I do that all the time. Yeah. The, uh, it's just the 12 horse in the uh, fifth race, folks, uh, for our Paisano Luca Panici there. The 12 in the fifth race at Gulfstream. You, now you have. Um, you do have a sheet for Keeneland, but like you said, uh, with the off track there, uh, beware of, uh, you know, the off conditions there. But you have uh, you have uh, sheets for Keeneland, Aqueduct, and Gulfstream today. Yes, sir. J-O-N-H-J-R-D-O-O-N.com. All right. We're not in trend. Thank you, Alfie. Okay. Thanks a lot, my man. Stay safe and be well. I will talk to you in the morning. You got it. And next up comes uh, Rich Ang. Don't go away. Who is there for heroes or the families left behind when a service member or first responder dies or is catastrophically injured in the line of duty? Who helps our country's homeless veterans? And who helps our nation to never forget 9-11? Let me tell you who. The Tunnel to Towers Foundation. The Foundation's Gold Star, Fallen First Responder, Smart Home, and Homeless Veteran programs comprise their In the Line of Duty programs. They're all dedicated to honoring our nation's heroes and their families. The Foundation's Never Forget programs engage people in 9-11 remembrance across America. Over 80 runs, walks, and climbs a year. Dozens of golf outings. And the Tunnel to Towers 9-11 Institute through 12th grade to help our nation keep its vow to never forget. More than 95 cents of every dollar you donate to Tunnel to Towers goes to its programs. Never forget the sacrifices of our country's greatest heroes. Donate $11 a month to Tunnel to Towers at T2T.org. That's T, the number two, T.org. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service, bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's Racebook has you covered. All right, back on Race Day Las Vegas. Time to go to Rich Ang standing by. And good morning, Richie. Hey, good morning, Ralphie. Uh, before we get started, I want to make one quick comment. I know we're short on time. But, sure. Uh, the trainer, uh, Phil Schoenthal, that uh, you and Jonathan were talking about, Yep. he's been in my horse racing rotisserie league for the last 10 years. And I can tell you this from knowing him. He's one of the nicest guys you're ever going to meet. His resume is clean as a whistle. And I'm really kind of stupefied stunned to, to hear this about uh, about him from Heiser. so uh, I, I'm, I would be a defender of his without even knowing the details right now I gotta tell you Richie I'm, I'm gonna say in the end they're gonna find out it was contamination yeah that's certainly a possibility a strong possibility so uh, but I'm just saying I know Phil and uh, I'm really um, yeah I'm a little upset to, to hear this news about him quite frankly yeah I gotta tell you a lot of other people are as well um well, uh, I know that you're a sports guy. You handled the football season for us and certainly uh, the uh, NCAA basketball season. But now, as you can tell by my cap, we're into the Masters this weekend. And uh, you may very well have a ticket or two on somebody that you think might win the Masters. You know, I've had a nice run of on uh, winning future book bets on the radio show with you, Ralph. And uh -huh. uh, I do have two golfers in my pocket. Right. If they can still get some action down, these are the guys that I have. But uh, I have uh, Hideki Matsuyama at 21 to 1. Uh -huh. And I've got Jordan Spieth at 25 to 1. And the thing about both of them, Ralph, is they are both former Masters champions. And, Mas and the Augusta National is kind of like a, a racehorse where – if a horse likes the course, they tend to run well over it again. Same with the golfers. If they do well at Augusta National, they tend to play well there. So I'm hoping that uh, maybe one of these two repeats yeah. for me 
at a square price. Well, I could tell you this right now. They're uh, let's put them this way: they're players for the courts. That's for sure. All right, Rich. Uh, we might as well get into uh, some picks. Yeah, let me give you a pick. You know, something just came up on my phone while I was talking about the Masters. Yeah, uh, I just got a text. O.J. Simpson died. Oh wow! O.J. Simpson literally just died. I, that's all the details I have, but it popped up on my phone from uh, ESPN's right. so, reliable source. All right, so it's uh, this is from ESPN on your phone. O.J. Simpson has passed away. I believe he he had a resident. Was he not living here in uh, Las Vegas? You know, I'm not sure about his background, but uh, I, all I can report is I just saw this from ESPN. I just got a note, right. we, O.J. Simpson. We will, we will note ESPN on the breaking news of the passing of O.J. Simpson. Okay, um, well, let's get a pick of Keelan. The race say the Keelan. It's a distance race on the grass. The pick is for grass only, Ralph, if they stay on. It's the number nine chasing the crown. Five to one in the morning line. The source getting class relief off the uh, fairground stakes. Close, closes really well against Ired Ortiz Jr., who's eating them up at Keeneland. So let's go with a nine, chasing the crown, race eight, Keeneland. Now, uh, I am almost guaranteed that they're going to come off the turf today at uh, Keeneland. So do you have a backup play on the dirt or in the mud? Uh, because this looks like it's going to be a, a race where uh, they're gonna, it's going to come off the turf based on, on the weather conditions and what's there already from yesterday. Yeah, a backup pick. Uh, let's go to the next race, race nine, uh, the number 10, perfectly wicked. Uh, this horse uh, should be able to get a nice stalking trip, fast pace to close into the 10, perfectly wicked in race nine at Keeneland. All right, kind, uh, kind of a description of the weather out there right now, but uh, in the ninth race, number 10, perfectly wicked. The 10 in the ninth race will probably be the pick because I'm sure that that uh, grass race is coming off the grass. Thanks a lot for your picks, both uh, at uh, Augusta, which uh, they may be delayed there with the weather as well, and uh, Keeneland and the uh, late uh, breaking news. And again, you credit this to ESPN, correct? Yeah, it just came on my phone as I was talking about the Masters because I, I get updates from ESPN, and it said O.J. Simpson died. All right. So we will, uh, we will leave it at that, that's for sure. Thanks a lot, Rich. Hey, thanks, Rob. Good luck, everybody. All right, we're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, we're going to wrap it up with uh, John Lindo and Jerry Jackowitz. Don't go away. From the South Point Studio, <laughs> the perfect blend of sports. But I think the Niners are going to wear them down. Detroit Pistons lost their 36 games. <laughs> Comedy. See over under on that relationship lasting. I'm going to put mayo in the coffee. Yes. Yes. I am beautiful. And a whole lot of Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. 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 Yeah. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Join Ryan McCormick. That's at least... Two picks outside of our own in the first round next year. Oreo. And host Frank Nicotero. <laughs> <laughs> Do I look at the clock? I... Ah! Ah! Oh! Watch Punchlines live at noon every weekday. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's Racebook has you covered. The Race Day Las Vegas Show, the only exclusive daily local media racing information source in Las Vegas. Everybody, we have a uh, time change for one of our top shows here at the South Point Studios Network. Uh, Sports by the Book will now be from 9 to 10 a.m. Tuesday through Saturday, I believe. It's Tuesday. Uh, let me check that. It's Tuesday through Saturday, 9 to 10 a.m. Sports by the Book. That's their new um, time slot here on the South Point Studios Network. Let's go to John Lendo standing by. John, good morning. Good morning, Ralph. How you doing? Are you enjoying your little vacation there from Santa Anita? I know you're still working with Keeneland, but uh... yeah, well, you know the weather's been good, so I, I kind of miss it. We had uh, a good weekend at Santa Anita last weekend. Like to be racing, but we'll start up a week from tomorrow and uh, get going, and we'll see how that meet works out. Well, we figuring it's going to be raining at uh, Keeneland. Figuring it's going to come off the turf, wouldn't you say? 
Yeah, it looked like it. It was pretty wet there yesterday, and it was supposed to be uh, raining last night. So I'm assuming a sloppy and off the turf is what I'm guessing. Well, I'm looking at the weather map, and there's a whole lot of clouds and rain right over Kentucky. So we'll, we'll wait and see about that. <clears throat> Your uh, thoughts about uh, right now at Kentucky, any uh, biases or anything people should know? No, you know, actually yesterday with that rain, I thought the track uh, evened out. You could come from behind. You could go inside and outside. I thought it was pretty fair after the first weekend where uh, speed was really good sprinting on the main track. Well, we got the, uh, you know, we got the mud going there today. And uh, one of our selections at Keeneland yesterday got bogged down on the rail and uh, couldn't uh, really uh, go well. So you got to find out the position on the, on the grass. I mean, on the dirt course with the mud out there, that's for sure. But you do have a Linda report and you're going to have that every uh, day for Keeneland. And of course, back with San Anita when it returns, the Linda report today for, uh, for Keeneland is available right now at the uh, race book right here at the <laughs> South Point, free of charge, exclusively. Covers uh, just the same format as you always have the Linda reports for other tracks and certainly Southern California. Selections in each race, a, a suggested late pick four, and uh, any goody information at the bottom, that's for sure, for Keeneland. And, of course, uh, that is today's Keeneland race, of course, uh, today's card. The Linda report right now here at the South Point, free of charge, and only here at the South Point, only free of charge here in the entire state of Nevada because they love horse players. John, what are we doing today? Let's go to race five at Keeneland, Ralph. Uh, number three, Luke, ran very well facing older horses for the first time, facing winners for the first time, running second at fairgrounds at the same level. Moves over to Keeneland today. Uh, steady work pattern out of the race. Being a three-year-old, I think this horse has more upside than some of the older rivals here. Look for a nice pace-pressing trip from a good post. Seven to number three, Luke, race number five, Keeneland. All right, you cut out a little bit here uh, on the show, but in the night, uh, in the uh, at uh, Keeneland in the fifth race, you like number three, Luke, at seven to two. The three, Luke, in the fifth race at Keeneland. That wraps up the early pick four and early pick five at Keeneland today. Don't forget, Linda Report covering the rest right now, exclusively and free of charge, complimentary here at the South Point Race Park. Uh, we will let you get back to your uh, honeydew list. <laughs> You got it, Ralph. Thanks yeah. a lot. Good All luck right. today. Thanks a lot, uh, John. Now we go to uh, Mr. Jerry Jackowitz standing by. Jerry, good morning. Good morning. Oh, look at our hats. Masters yeah. hats. Masters hats, baby. It's uh, Masters time, that's for sure. Uh, let's hope they can... Uh, Masters week. Yeah. Let's hope they can get off on time. I, I got a feeling that they might be a little bit delayed there with the weather there at the Masters, but we'll wait well, and see. We'll see. Right now it's showing on the TV, so I think it'll be uh, okay, okay, but we'll see. Okay. Well, uh, they're good golfers, that's for sure. All right, so we only have an aqueduct today from you, so I guess we'll uh, try to extract a couple of plays out of you. Okay, let's go to the second race for our first play. Number three, big engine, uh, Trevor McCarthy. Uh, uh, this is a nine-year-old gelding who's uh, kind of been in good form and seems to be getting better and better. And, you know, he's down at the lower classes, and now they're pushing him up in class. Mm -hmm. He's really b better than 25,000 if he's right. I think he's right right now. And they'll handle wet track if a little moisture comes in there. So I like the three an awful lot at four to one mm -hmm. in race number two. I'll play the three over the one, four, five. I'll reverse one, four, five over the three. But the three, that'll be my feature play. And at seven to two or higher, definite pop-out key in race number two. All right, second race, the three over one, four, five in reverse, three in the second race. You got a bonus play for us? Yeah, let's go right to the third race as long as we're there. Mm -hmm. I, I thought that... Excellent men, the four horse, uh, represented really decent value at five to one again for David Jacobson. Okay, um, just comes off a nice win down at, at Laurel, it ships back to New York, and uh, maybe he's found the you know, found mm. out how to get this horse to run. And uh, all right, give him a shot. This is a cheap enough class, and he should be all right at five to one. I think it's fair value, um, for exotics. I don't know. I'm not really sure if I love all the exotics. I might play. Uh, I might play the the the, the four seven exact the box, but I would a good win bet. Win place bet on the four seems pretty reasonable. All right, three. all right. That's a good housekeeping seal of approval from our handicappers. Jonathan Hardoon also likes that horse in the third race. So the four yeah. ex excellent men. The four is uh, Jerry's uh, bonus play as well. Maybe keying it uh, with an exotic over the seven horse, who's the morning line favorite. Power pages for all Aqueduct today at uh, jerryjspowerpage.com. Ten seconds. Do you have a, a, a thought for the Masters? Real quick. 
Jordan Spieth. You got it. Hey, by the way, Jer- uh, Jerry, uh, Richie has that uh, guy in his future book as well. All right. I, I know. He also has uh, yeah. He also has Hideki Matsuyama. <laughs> I know. But I'm a Jordan Spieth fan. So you got it. You got to wrap it up real quick. Say it. Say it. Have a great race day, everybody.